purpose of health insurance is to be able to access health care without worrying. That is why the NHIS is working assiduously to make sure that enrollers do not experience hitches as they access health care, especially at the secondary or tertiary level. Towards this end, the scheme is putting mechanism in place to checkmate problems that may arise when enrollees need to move from primary to other levels of health care. Welcome to another episode of Easy Access to Healthcare for All, a program which brings you news and issues around the National Health Insurance Scheme and the health insurance space as it drives Nigeria towards universal health coverage. My name is Aisha Mohammed Ahmed Yo Anko. Please stay tuned as we bring you details after the break. First on the program is a highlight of events around the NHIS. In the news, NHIS sensitizes staff of the Ministry of Interior on their rights, and in Kaduna State, NHIS holds workshop for the State Oversight Committee members on the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund. Please stay tuned. A team from the NHIS visited the Federal Ministry of Interior to interact with enrollees of the National Health Insurance Scheme. The visit was to sensitize enrollees and market its gift ship program that accommodates everyone, not only those in the formal sector. The team was led by Mr. Emmanuel Ononopono, Head, Media and Public Relations. While addressing the enrollees, he highlighted their right as well as the NHIS benefit package. This is what I got to do. A woman who is who, who has just taken in pregnant, that woman is entitled to antenatal care without pay, mm. delivery without pay, mm. whether the delivery is CS or not CS, without pay, then postnatal care without pay. When we say cover, it means you should not pay. He explained the gift ship program as a platform that brings in more Nigerians and helps the scheme fulfill its mandate. So gift ship has been designed for that man who has a church, for that man who runs uh, a business that has 10 people, for that person who just maybe philanthropist, politician, everybody. At the end of the meeting, Participants sought for clarifications on problems faced as they visit their providers. Uh, the NHIS on 2nd June 2022 organized a one-day orientation and capacity building training for State Oversight Committee and board members of the Kaduna State Contributory Health Management Agency, Kachma, on the Basic Healthcare Provision Funds. In a welcome remark, the Zonal Coordinator Northwest, Ulmu Kairisada, who was represented, highlighted some key mandates for the healthcare providers in the implementation of Basic Healthcare Provision. As you are all aware, the mandate uh, given to National Health Insurance Team by the federal government is the achievement of UHC by 2030. So to expand the coverage, the federal government set aside 1% of its consolidated revenue into the pool, which is now known as the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, and also made it a criteria or requirement that before any state can benefit from the fund, it must establish an agency. It must establish its state social health insurance agency pay equity fund through legislation by state members, by, by state House of Assembly members, and also pay the five counterpart funds for their own beneficiaries. Kaduna State Coordinator of the NHIS, Enzaria Jafaru, further explained the responsibility of both NHIS and the state agencies and why the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund is an important mechanism and a good strategy in achieving its universal health coverage. The NHIS is a kind of a middleman between the enrollee and the and the and the share that is the Federal State Contributor Health Management Authority, Kachima. So the money comes to the NHIS, 
and NHS uh, is the one buying the services on behalf of Miroli through Kachima, which is the state agency. The money is being released to Kachima uh, annually, and then already there are some poor persons or indigents that cannot afford that have been registered by Kachima. So NHI is paying for those people, and those people uh, have already registered with the selected primary health care centers in each of the wards. So when we release the money to them, then the Kachima then releases the money to the facilities on monthly basis. And then recently, uh, we used to have only primary care. Now we have secondary care. So this secondary care, the, uh, the AIDS agency, is the one responsible for issuing a court to facilities so as to make them enable them to make referral to secondary providers. Also present at the workshop was the Kaduna State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Amina Mohamed Baloni, represented by Director of Planning Research and Statistics, Ministry of Health, Dr. Sunday Joseph. He said the newly introduced Basic Healthcare Provision Fund and previous sources of funds will go a long way in strengthening healthcare provision for the enrolled beneficiaries. All gateways are expected to be abreast with all these new changes so that uh, we will be able to provide the right services to be able to improve this, the health status of the people of Nigeria in general. We expect that we are all knowledgeable about the changes that are taking place and this, some of these changes mean that we will have more funding to provide for more people in the state. So we expect that uh, all the people that have been enrolling the, into the program will, they will increase in number so that more people will get these services in the country. It was a very interactive and consultative training as some participants perceived it as an eye-opener. The oversight function of the uh, Basic Healthcare Provision Funds is to ensure uh, the effective administration and disbursements of uh, the Basic Healthcare Provision Funds uh, portion that comes to the states. Um, it's one fund that is supposed to go throughout the country, but uh, it's backed by a counterpart funding from the states as well. And the take home package for this training is then we have a lot of, will I say, review in the basic healthcare provision fund. Because as you can see, initially we used to have three gateways, and then now we are told that we have four gateways. We have the NCDC gateway, which was not in the uh, in the in, in the guidelines before, and we also have the we were also when I say thought about the premium distribution. Where initially in the old guideline we don't have the MIE and then quality assurance in it. The program is easy access to healthcare for all. In a situation where an enrollee needs to access secondary or tertiary care, the health maintenance organization is responsible for issuing referral codes to patients when the need arises. The scheme is making sure that even when there are delays, enrollees do not suffer. Let us take you through the details. Please don't go away. The NHIS is the foremost agency in implementing social health insurance in Nigeria. It is intended to be the veritable vehicle through which Nigeria can attain universal health coverage. The scheme maintains a tripartite relationship with healthcare facilities and the health maintenance organizations to see to the fulfillment of its mandates. Through the NHIS benefit package, enrollees have access to primary, secondary and tertiary care in times of need. The benefit package is what brings everybody together in one basket. The, what everybody under the formal sector enjoy is the NHI standard benefit package. So, and the benefit package is the same. It's robust, very comprehensive. So uh, that is just what brings all, all the GIFSHIP, the public sector, the organized private sector together into the pool. In a situation when an enrollee needs to access secondary care, the health maintenance organization is responsible for issuing referral codes to patients when the need arises. 
The referral code is usually issued by the health maintenance organizations to healthcare facilities when an enrollee requires a secondary or tertiary care. The standard process is that by the time an enrollee is being referred to the secondary or tertiary level, it is mandatorily mandated for the primary provider to call the HMO to seek for the approval of the HMO for that service to be provided. And in the course of doing this, it is the responsibility of the HMO to ensure that that particular service that is being referred is actually necessary and needed to minimize or possibly eliminate the issue of polypharmacy and taking on due advantage of the entire scenario. However, sometimes delays are encountered at the point of issuance due to some unforeseen circumstances. We have had complaints of people going to hospital and not getting the, the authorization code on time to assess secondary and tertiary care. We need to be mindful that the right thing needs to be done. Uh, the request from the healthcare facilities going to the HMO should be in a form that is understandable and that has been agreed under the scheme. The necessary information have to be there. The HMO will need to determine that these are conditions that should actually be treated as secondary and tertiary and not at the primary to give the code. But the scheme is not leaving enrollees at the mercy of delays. The NHIS provides a way out. Recently, NHIS have employed um, uh, medical personnel in all the state's offices in the Federation and with the coming of uh, on board of ENHIS, which will be very soon, the call center system will come on board. And so we'll be able to monitor more closely, real time, what is happening over there. And at the point, NHIS may consider, you know, overriding some of these issues and making it easy for people to go to the hospital. So where a specific time, uh, lapses and codes are not addressed, it's not properly rejected and not uh, delivered to the hospital to, for the patients to, as, to assess care. NHIS may have to override such decisions and then uh, invite the HMOs to, to go ahead and take care of such authorization that are issued. Dr. Agada explains more on strategies put in place to strengthen the process. We are developing programs where there's the, the recent one that we're looking at, what we call the NHI strategy to improve the responsiveness of healthcare facilities. Uh, so we are working on several ideas that we feel, we have also developed the healthcare facility accountability framework uh, that we will be deploying very soon. So we are hoping that with that and with the presence of the call center, one of the strategy we're thinking of is to have the phone numbers of the doctors uh, at the state offices in every healthcare facility in, that is accredited by NHI. So for example, if you are in FCT, the phone number of the doctors and the professionals who are in the FCT state office will be available in every of our accredited facilities. Stakeholders commend the efforts put in place by the scheme in issuing codes. For NHIS, I think their re referral and uh, fee for services are more uh, better than some of the private uh, HMOs because we don't have problems with referrals as regards the NHIS. We call for codes, they give us code on time, and at the end of the month, they pay fee for service at the right time. I think we are good with that. Now what happened that the capitation one is the primary level where people come in for routine care, headache, malaria. Now when they need specialized care, take for example, now somebody needs more specialized surgery, then you have to go for secondary care. The NHIS has thought about this and incorporated both primary and secondary health care into their system. So basically to move into secondary care, you have to inform the HMOs or if it's an emergency, you do it and then inform them later. So basically it's a very seamless transition so that care is provided.
Today on our stakeholders segment, we had a chat with Abdul Fatai Mohammed Sani, the NHIS Help Desk Officer of First Care Multi Specialist Hospital in Kaduna. He speaks on partnership with NHIS. As NHIS, they play a fighting role in terms of uh, regulatory and uh, in the case some HMO, they may not want to pay our bills. So that's a they create a room for reconciliation and at the end of the day after reconciliation we issue those HMO that have paid off their bill for them to continue this service. So I think that one helps to manage relations between the service provider and the uh, HMO. Abdul Fatai says the introduction of NHIS has made accessing healthcare easy to Nigerians. Very well. Because before the NHIS uh, program, people that need some health service, they could not afford it. But the, the, since the advent of the NHIS, it's only the civil servants and the bigger processor that they can enroll their staff under the NHIS scheme, be the private or uh, national level. Who state have their own as a Kashmir or as Kaduna, for example. So, this has gone a long way to help each household to have access to the health care, including me. My, my, my family were enjoying the NHS service through my wife. She worked with the police and, and, and police and education force. And if on was time, she needed to go for surgery. NHIS take out the bill. So it's a, it's a good program. I think it's one of the things that our government got right. On the NHIS benefits package, Abdul Fatai says it is quite comprehensive but stresses some areas that need more information. It's good, but there are, you know, by you see, the fatal drugs that the NHIS is not covered. And some families may not be able to afford it. At times, we always have to give an uh, alternative and may not work as so effective as the one they're supposed to use. So maybe they should look into the drugs, how they can still help. And they need to do they need to sanitize our patients. So they should realize that they, being a branded drug is not, being, being not a branded drug is not, it's not a, well, there are generic drugs that are more even better than branded what They have that, Mentality, one is not branded, you will be complaining it's not the, but a generic drug or branded drug, so far as the doctor prescribes it, I know what's wrong with the patient. I think I, there's a program that NHL can hold that let them know the drug issued by a patient and being uh, approved by NAFDAC and the NHIS program, they should take it and appreciate it. Has the NHIS helped improve funding for hospitals under the scheme? Abdul Fatai speaks. It, it helps in some area because when the capitation paid, most of the time we don't get fees of service as due time, but the capitation is going a long way to cover our... The hospital also source their drug and other equipment at all. So, the capitation is a is a kind of a a, a, a package that help even more than it was at the end of the day, it was always what you expect may not even come. But capitation is a once you have those life, that money is sure and you can budget part of your expenses on that. Abdul Fatai further highlights some challenges faced in implementing health insurance in Nigeria. The only challenges we have is that uh, is peculiar to the HMOs. Some HMO will be going for three months, they will not pay. And when you try to I mean get back to them, this is what we need money to take off our own side. We that was it we have we have discovered one. They say the, 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 the money they have with them, that money if they don't manage or the kind of, I don't know how they do it, that they will not be able to serve all the service provider under them. 
So I don't know if they lodge money somewhere to do another business before they so they they will they will keep the bill for like three months before they settle us. So that is the only challenge we see. And maybe the government should look at the 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 price, maybe if the money is somehow uh in terms of the price higher, maybe the money will be enough to run the program better. Finally, Abdul Fatai commends the current NHIS leadership on its reforms that have resolved lingering issues in the health insurance space. He tried because, like all this process of accreditation before, is something cumbersome. But now, is the accreditation is very fast. Once you have all the meet you come and they will grant you without need to lobby with somebody or pay anybody you just pay for the service the your fee and processing fee and other thing and you get your certificate and uh, there was a time i watched a program that then the director himself sanitizing public about the gener gen generic drugs so the are a program they do on a nt but maybe they should extend it to other TV station so that we, we, most of people will be aware of what is going in NHS. But what I've seen so far, being the health workers and the water, I think there is an improvement. That was Abdul Fatai Mohammed Sani, the NHIS help desk officer at First Care, sharing his experiences in the course of operations. We will now take your questions in this last segment of the program. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? Question How does an enrollee contribute? It depends on the program that you're joining. Uh, to contribute to the NHIS program, uh, there is a general one that is uh, open to almost everybody, uh, especially those uh, in the informal sector or even in the formal sector but are not yet enrolled, which is the gift ship. The group individual uh, family social health insurance program. So how to contribute to that is um, if you are coming in as uh, an individual, uh, you must uh, register two other people along with you, uh, which means um, 15,000 per person is 45,000. So if you pay that uh, to the remitter account, remitter of NHIS, um, you are able to enroll. And for families, if um, you are up to the number that is required for family, you can equally enroll. Uh, for group, for those who will say we want to come as a group, maybe faith-based or uh, community-based, can come in and register uh, themselves under the group social health insurance, uh, the gift ship. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? I think I paid almost almost nothing. In great easy. We only paid 10%. We all work towards accelerating universal health coverage. Everybody, irrespective of people's gender, has access to basic health care services. Please join us again, same time and same station next week for another interesting package on the program easy access to healthcare for all you can also watch the program anytime any day via our youtube channel for inquiries send sms messages to the number on your screen or call any of the nhis helplines see you next week